this is Lucy and welcome to another Fallout 76 Building 101 episode. Today I'm on Scarlet who is the host of this series and she is now level 54. So without further ado, today we will be building this. I've decided to call it the Green Diamond Chalet because for me it has a sort of a skiing chalet style so you could just call it the wedge camp or the triangle camp you can call it whatever you like <laughs> I originally built this camp on Nora when she was I think about level level 10 or 11 um, I originally built it in metal because I just got the metal pieces I think they were a gift from a friend <laughs> But I decided that I wanted to do it in sort of mixed media. So it's wood and metal. I used Atom Store um, furniture for most of it. These sofas were recently available with this fire. Um, I think it's the Hunting Lodge set like the red fireplace which you can put in its place this this will go through the roof i have blueprinted a lot of the furniture you might remember this um display from my uh tiny house video Use the merge trick to embed that plant here in the punch bowl, and the cat is up on the uh, chair because my probably because my cats are driving me mad at the moment, <laughs> always being where they're not meant to be. Simple kitchen. I've used sort of skiing themed um, decor with pictures. Bathroom with a nice view out to the road. You can wave at everyone when you're in the bath. Upstairs is the sleeping area. I used the wood panelling um, because every every picture I looked of sort of ski lodge decor had had this kind of wood panelling uh, or wood in wooden interior. There's a nice view over to New Gad from here, or to the dried up lake bed. There are still, there is still enough water there if you want to go collect water though. There are, a bit, there are large sort of puddles and a little sort of stream run through the middle. I continued the theme on with the slope roof to create this workshop. I put the windows up the top by putting a half wall at the bottom and then a full wall on top. So it lets light in but people can't see in. And again, the metal is, whoops. <laughs> I don't know whether to leave that in or not. <laughs> yeah, don't fall off kids. The, um, the two-tone theme is continued with the metal on on this side of the building I think we'll put that down as a Lucy fail <laughs> I did wonder this this space because I've put a hip wall in this space and the last sort of foundation piece is wasted I did try putting the generators in there but even if I put them right up abutting to the wall um, the roofs would not go on. So you, if you are short of resources, you could just leave that off. So we'll see. It's up to you guys. And if you have a really large flat area, you could actually have a big build budget. You could, I think, yeah, this is using about half of my build budget. I still do have some things stored, as you can see. You could possibly build a giant 
um, a two two wedge, you know, a giant triangle. But anyway, let's make a start. I have to move my camp now and replace my widget down here. Obviously, you don't have to build it here. I'm I'm just finding it easier to build in this location because it's flat and I and I know the terrain. Um, it might look better with a mountain view. So feel free to put it wherever you want. I will be right back. Okay, and I'm back and I have moved my camp and then moved my camp back here. The first thing I'm going to do is move my camp widget out of the way because there's nothing more frustrating <laughs> than trying to put a foundation down and realising your camp widget's in the way. I am going to... Oh, another note. If you're moving a camp, your entire camp is stored. Um, if you want to rebuild it, don't forget that you need to press X and store all of the components. Otherwise, if you rebuild it, you'll be using new components and uh, new resources. It does take a few seconds, unfortunately. There we go. The other thing I'm going to do is put down a turret. So I don't get bitten on the bottom by a, by a dog. Oh, we've got super mutants actually, I can see them coming. Oh no, they're ghouls. Which is annoying because if it was super mutants there would only be two. I would have liked to have put that camp a little bit closer to the road, but I have found these, these large tufty plants stick through the floor, no matter what I do, so I moved it a bit, a bit further back. When I'm trying to line up something with the road, I tend to use this white line here, just to be a bit higher. And I'm going to use that as a guide. Then the camp should be parallel with the road. This camp, the main building, and the shed is optional, the workshop is optional, is let me just change direction. Five wide by three deep. I don't know which end to put the fifth on. Maybe this end? I already know that I'm going to use um, the lightwood floor in here, so I think actually what I might do is change the floors straight up because of this situation. <laughs> Although you can check change floors around the direction when you have stuff on them. If you have a um, something like a table it will move the table.
So this is our foundation. As you can see, you could make it a bit higher. There is a lot of greenery showing through. It is very, very annoying that we have this bulldozer that just doesn't work. I like to have my camps as low to the ground as I can because in the real world, yeah, you don't have a three foot foundation <laughs> under your house. Or you do, but it's hidden. If you want to raise them up, one easy way to do it is this. Get one that's on its own, or make one on its own. Raise it up. And then just replace. The foundations. Although it looks like I've changed the direction. And again, can't see it's so bright today. I did actually do this video yesterday and ended up having to abandon it because absolutely everything went wrong. <laughs> Kept getting attacked. The weather was appalling. Couldn't see anything. Problems with cats, problems with the doorbell ringing, it just was endless. Um, so I thought there's no way I can edit all this, so I thought I'll do it again on Friday, which I'm doing now. Right, walls. Now for this for this project, um, I know what shape I want. And we're going to be going up in half floor increments. But I'm starting with the back because the front has that inset porch. This is going to be the door to the workshop. And Each each um, wall piece has um, a triangular piece on top, so you're getting this this straight line all the way up. This is going to be a window. You can now put wallpaper on wooden windows. They fix that. You used to have to convert a window to a plain wall and then convert it back to a window if you wanted to put wallpaper on it. So we're going to use the back basically as a template. We're going to skip two tiles because that's where the inset is and go to back go to the end one. Another window, another window. and the triangular piece. Then we're going to switch to metal. I don't actually have the um, glass pieces yet because I think they might be interesting in this build. But um, I should have them in a couple of weeks I think. I'm going to put metal walls on the end. Again, if you want to put windows in these, that's fine.
Oh, I, I would li I'd like to see what it looked like with a full glass wall there, actually. Or a full glass wall on the um, porch. Going to put the upstairs in. The ladder starts just beyond the doorway and leaves one square tile here. Can be a big, big pain to get in where you want them. Let's go upstairs. We're going to cover the um, porch. And there we go. Now we want to continue the walls, so you need the upper floors to put these walls on. Half floor, triangle, triangle. There you have the kind of bare bones, the skeleton, I suppose. Now I'm going to put the roofs on. And the roofs go all the way to the floor. I first built this camp on Nora. Um, when I did it, I don't think I included the um, the last section. It was slightly smaller. It is wasted space, but... What you can do is, and what I did on my build, is put a short hip wall in here. And I did that upstairs as well. Now, if you want to put a triangular piece in here, you are going to need, because you want it inside out, you want the, you're going to need to put a floor here temporarily. And then, hopefully, okay. you can leave that floor in if you want, I prefer it open. You can continue the wall hit up here actually, but if you want to double wall it, you will need to use the flamer trap on the half wall and triangle that would fit in this position. And you need to use um, the brick. You need to use the brick to flamer trap triangular walls. It's the only one it works on. So I'd suggest using a brick for the half wall as well. 
um, because otherwise when you look at the edging here it will be two, two different types. There's an internal wall here for the bathroom. I always use the barn for internal walls. Come on. It went a second ago. Okay. Because I like the white surround. I use the wood panelling um, to give it that kind of rustic ski lodge look. You can use whatever wallpaper you want. Yay! Wallpaper on wooden windows, finally. <laughs> Don't forget to do the back of your bathroom door. I'm curious whether the wallpaper goes on glass walls, which kind of defeats the object of having a glass wall, but I just wondered. <laughs> I'll have to check when I get them. If you want to put the workshop on, um, it's three by two. And again, just this increase of a triangle, a half and a triangle, and a, do a doorway. I use metal walls on the end and I put the windows at the top so the way I did that was simply to put the half walls at the bottom and then the full walls on top I mean obviously you can build whatever kind of I missed the triangle on the door. <laughs> and then again, you just put your roofs on. Obviously I didn't double wall these, if you want to go ahead but you will need to flame a trap the um, smaller pieces. did put because the ground's so uneven here I did put some foundations around the back Okay. 
getting dark now, so um, I will be back in the morning with a few quick decorating tips. So a couple of little things. Um, at the front I used um, concrete um, steps. I used two. Rather than wall lights I actually put um, sort of sp not spotlights but the um, flat lights on. When doing these I tend to just plonk them down and then um, readjust them when I'm a little bit closer so it's easier to kind of get them in the middle that way I find. Because the perspective sometimes can change depending on what angle you're looking at it from. I did forget actually to put wallpaper on this little triangle, I realised. After all the bother of doing that then uh, not putting the wallpaper on. You will unfortunately find that, especially if you have a light floor up here, that the walls will show through from downstairs. You can either use a darker floor up here or just put a rug over it. To get the fire in, take the roof off. And you can use any of the fires. I used this one. And then you can put the roof back over the top. <laughs> if it'll go. There we go. For the kitchen I used my four bookcase blueprint and I put items on. I will show you how to merge items with with bookshelves again. I don't think that's straight. <laughs> it's not very, hang on. Let's try that again. It's usually, I usually have the floors going the other way. So you can see, you can line it up with the lines on the floor. To merge items with a bookcase, um, you need to put your items on top. Let's go to. I have so many stored things. Again, sometimes things are tricky to line up, put them down and then readjust them when you're closer. Take your bookcase for a little walk, make sure you select the bookcase and in a lot of camp areas you will find an area where the bookcase will sink into the ground but stay green. If you release the bookcase it will pop up but the item on top will stay the same so if you keep 
selecting and deselecting. Now it's getting very close here, so I want to try and just drop it down a little bit. And there you have it. I think that could actually go a little bit lower. It looks like the thing is floating. There you go. Then when you have all your items on that you want, you just take your bookcase back and try to line it up. And there you have it. I did obviously blueprint um, some of the um, items. This is a plant display that I blueprinted for the outside. I use the same technique for the um, punch bar with um, the plant stand in it. If I can find it. I'm starting to wish that they would um, update the menu for this because we've got so many items now. It was a bit tricky getting it in the middle on all sides. And then all I did was drop it down. That's not perfect, <laughs> but you get the you get the general idea. Wasn't perfectly centered. To power this house, I stacked four generators while they were um, wired up. and it actually kept them connected so and the way I passed the power through the wall I converted this back to a wall put a power connector here and one on the other side. Ah, okay, let's try that again. Let's move it to the right. And that one. Here we go. Turn this back into a wall. Oh, actually, no, we're leaving it as a window, aren't we? <laughs> right, and then you just connect. You can do this with a plane wall. Um connect your conduit to your power source I must admit I, I am tempted if I get time to have a play with 
different power connectors because I hate draping these across buildings I have tried using the conduits before but I didn't get on very well with them um, oh, didn't work. I do put them on the corners, it just saves a bit of faffing, but sometimes they will not go. And the other thing I found recently is that if it tells you that it can't place something, sometimes when you move it, it still won't be able to place it. You have to um, press B and deselect it. Now we have our porch lights lit up. I think the rest of the decorations are fairly straightforward. So there you have it really. For doors I used the I used this door at the back because it lets some light in. I used this door for the front and the CD shed door, which I can't find. There it is. For the workshop area. I will finish decorating and um, be back in a sec. So as you can see it's got dark um, and I have added a few more lights um, while I've been decorating. I have added the cuckoo clock. Um, this plan is available from the vendor bot. Um, if you haven't seen him before he's quite rare. The best places I've found him are Charleston Station, run across the railway bridge, run back, he may spawn. And also, if you go down to Alpine River Cabins and run down towards the meadow, he sometimes spawns that along that road. You may need to do it a few times. I think Inov Survivalist did a video um, about spawning him, so check that out. Um, he only has two plans, the Cuckoo Clock and the Nuka Cola Clock. There have been a couple of Cuckoo Clocks recently in the Atom Store then, so feel free to use them if you want. I added my Nuka Shine barrel. I did straighten this because OCD. I've added a table lamp. And I forgot to put the roof back on. <laughs> I straightened the fire, it wasn't straight. There we go. I put a spotlight down the stairs to light this up because it's very dark. I put a little reading nook in. You have to be careful placing items near curtains um, because they have a bounding box, but that's fine. If you ever have a problem putting an item under a low roof like this, if it won't go in, I mean, I must admit it's not something I've, I've had happen for a while, but you can always take the roof off, place the item and, and replace the roof. I have put a railing up temporarily. Um, as much as I don't like these railings, they don't look too bad in this situation. So that is the finished camp. And you get to see it at night. So that's all from me today. Um, 
plans at the moment. I have built a clinic on Nora. I am in the process of decorating it. I will do a camp tour of that build. Um, and I'm going to do probably three to start with. Um, role play videos on how to make um, a few drugs. Definitely psycho. I haven't decided what else yet to be honest. Definitely psycho. So we'll see how that goes. I still have my Halloween camp on my main character. I will be leaving that until Halloween and then I will be building a kind of rustic lodge ranch building I think after that with some modern twists. Hopefully by then I will have the glass walls so I'll keep you posted. I have some ideas for the channel going forward. Welcome to all my new subscribers by the way. Um, and um, I'd love to see if you build any of these buildings I would love to see your versions of them. Uh, if any of them are on Xbox I could come and visit you or I need to find a way to um, enable you to send me photos. I could start a Discord but I don't know yet. I am thinking of starting a blog so you can hear all about my crazy cats, my crazy life, my crazy ha health problems. <laughs> I have let slip that I have asthma and fibromyalgia. What I haven't told you is the reason that all these things cause me problems is three years ago I um, went to a grocery store, a supermarket and went into anaphylactic shock. I have a lot of allergies, food allergies, and one of them went airborne and it's so sensitive to a really common fruit. So this is part of the reason I don't go out a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm thinking of starting a, 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 a blog. Um, I, I do other things other than play games. I like cooking and cooking with allergies is, is great fun. I do actually have the Fallout cookbook, so I might do some recipes from that. So I have lots of things that I'm pondering. I have recently started a um, Lucy Jane Plays Pinterest account and once I've actually got some content on it I will link that to my videos and um, so you can see some of the pictures that I choose and some, see some of the inspiration I get from Pinterest because I, I get a lot of build ideas from Pinterest. So if there's anything you'd like to see on the channel or anything you want to know then um, or any questions about the build please let me know that's all from me today thank you for watching